Well, it's been about six or seven months since I posted the an earlier video that did Google speech to text uh, using uh, in audio and Google speech to text AT API and a WinForm application. Uh, I'll have a link below and you can look at that app. But I got a lot of requests from people uh, to make it uh, not read the audio from a file, but just send the stream and do it uh, synchronously. And Google's API allows you to do that. So what you're about to see is an example that I had been working on uh, that does just that. Plus, it uses uh, in audios. Uh, peak detection uh, capability and uh, what's basically happening is we have a uh, timer and we have the peak detector and we record for uh, one second it's voice activated and it gets sent off to Google and processed so I'm going to run the app and uh, you basically are going to see something like this uh, we turn on the voice detection and you see a progress bar and basically whatever I'm saying uh, gets sent off to Google uh, using a timer uh, the, the, I'll show a little bit in the code uh, how this works uh, it's not necessarily real time and as you can see uh, Google um, gets confused and it's obviously getting confused because the samples that I'm sending it are getting cut off uh, and uh, turned back on uh, basically when uh, that peak detection happens. So let's take a look at the code. Uh, this isn't perfect. This isn't a perfect solution. Uh, I'm not a professional um, audio to speech uh, engineer uh, by far, but I had the idea of not only doing the <coughs> uh, synchronous or asynchronous API calls to Google, but to have the uh, your voice activate when uh, the re recording starts and gets sent and obviously Google and uh, Amazon and Microsoft have uh, dedicated hardware to do this uh, so this is just uh, you know trying to do something in software uh, the other thing we don't have is, and as I've been doing the research, we don't have uh, really an, a natural language uh, processing back end, uh, and we also don't have a, what we really need is what they call a dialogue engine, so you can get uh, casual uh, AI conversational results, which is something that I'm you know interested in uh, and as uh, people obviously know uh, if they looked at the earlier version of the code uh, this is setting off to Google to get processed and then it comes back and probably more of this processing that I'm talking about uh, needs to happen uh, up in uh, Google's cloud and uh, not be sending the uh, text you know back down uh, and then have to do more processing on it uh, if uh, I've also been looking at tensorflow and their seek to seek and their chatbot uh, examples and that's something that I may uh, head towards but what you have to do before you do any of that is obviously have uh, uh, voice detection uh, and get processed uh, on the the client before anything gets either sent to Google or gets sent to 
a engine that runs over your network or actually on your box. Anyway, uh, let's uh, take a look at the code. So uh, one thing I needed was the um, a thing called the sample aggregator uh, that Enaudio had uh, as part of some other uh, examples that I was looking at. And there were two or three different versions of N audio uh, and the, the code wasn't laid out uh, exactly the way it is here with this uh, ability. So I took the, see over here, the sample aggregator class uh, and the recording state and the audio recorder all out of uh, the different examples in N audio and uh, put them in this project and you know merge them together to where I could get something as clean as this which is um, I basically we want this event to get fired into our application when uh, you see uh, activity on the microphone and that's uh, uh, basically what's happening here uh, here is some code that I'm not using right now I was trying to refactor the uh, Google code uh, to uh, break out. I, I guess it's this functional programming, programming paradigm and uh, the code that sends it off to Google is in one method, one task and I didn't like that but anyway couldn't get it to work. So we're back to this. Uh, may, we're back in the main method. We're setting up our in audio wave in device uh, we are setting up our uh, uh, data available event callback uh, because what's going to be happening is we're going to be setting a timer that's going to record for one second and then it's going to stop and after that it's going to send that to Google and start all over again. So we cr create the wave buffer. Some of this code uh, is in the original app that I had written. Uh, now we're going to set the timer up. Uh, this is just a real cute, crude way of uh, getting kind of a callback uh, after one second uh, using the timer. So um, this event is going to come in from the um, uh, wave in. I'm sorry. Oh, from the sample aggregator of an audio and that's basically going to tell us hey uh, there's some activity on the mic and we look into uh, do some calculations to kind of change the number a little bit and if it's greater than five uh, what we do is we enable the timer and we start recording now this function will get called repeatedly so uh, what we're uh, this is like a one-shot trigger that's saying hey there's mic activity start recording uh, crude naive design uh, but it works so while the wave in is recording this callback gets called and we uh, buffer up the samples uh, for later on after one second the timer is going to tick we are going this method is going to get called we're going to turn off the timer and we're going to stop recording and then here's where, you know where the magic happens and uh, which is this function right here I, I guess I could have put these two together or not made it at a well I, I had to make it a function because it's a task uh, with this async here so uh, you got to call them like this or you get some complaints. Uh, tried to refactor some of this but because uh, I don't like recreating these every single time but you have to if you don't the Google API will uh, complain. Uh, this is the standard code that was in the other example uh, that came from Google uh, setting up the uh, requisition or the recognized request you can look in the documents and you can play around uh, with these values in here to get a little bit different uh, results uh, then we ask the wave buffer uh, we peel out the actual sample 
and uh, we put it in a byte array uh, because then what we're going to do, and this is Google code right in here, uh, other than this, uh, we're going to send that buffer to Google. Uh, again, I don't like this being in here. Uh, basically, is an async task. I tried to break it out. The problem is, is that when we need this streaming call, uh, we would have to have that in the other, you know, have it globally or uh, accessible. Uh, so I left this code back in here, uh, and it's just a uh, task that's uh, getting created. It's uh, running and waiting for the response to come back from Google. Uh, again, this is Google's code. I've got a minor tweak in here, which takes uh, whatever text we got we get back from Google, uh, print it out to the console, uh, and um, I have this little last said just to make sure that um, uh, we're trying not to repeat ourselves, and I'm not sure if this is working just right. It seems like Google's API. Uh, uh, repeats itself or I don't have it configured right there's not a lot of documentation on it uh, so um, you can do the homework on that now since these since this is technically in another thread uh, we have to do a an invoke uh, on the UI thread because that's where the text box lives after that um, uh, eventually this is filling something up uh, we've already sent the buffer up in here so this the, the reason why I don't like this code is this is gonna immediately return right in here uh, but be running someplace else so we're clearing the the buffer and we're uh, we're doing this uh, async uh, complete there could be some race conditions in here um, uh, again, I, I don't like the way this is laid out, but this is their example, and you can see it kind of works. And that's it. This is just the button that we click to start monitoring, and uh, that's all she wrote. So uh, I think there would be a cleaner way, uh, uh, and I've, I haven't spent a lot of time on this code to break this out and uh, sequentially manage uh, how all this gobbledygook is doing uh, what it does but uh, you're getting it for free and uh, so you're not paying for it and um, uh, but you get to learn and see uh, you know how this stuff works so uh, this is just a raw video of my desktop so you can see the app running and uh, I'm not going to do anything fancy with the video uh, other than uh, let you see what you're doing uh, and uh, you know you can get better results um, if you wait and you kind of synchronize see how I, I waited there and I, I stopped talking, kind of let it do its thing. And I just added some code to go to the very bottom of this text box. I don't know why it's not. Uh, you can see where it gets confused. So, and that's probably my code, uh, not Google's. But the concept's there where you're. Uh, you can imagine some of this maybe running on a microcontroller uh, and doing some pre-processing, doing some filtering on uh, human voice detection, background noise uh, elimination. I'm using a headset right now, uh, so uh, this isn't falsely triggered. Uh, so there's obviously Google and Amazon uh, are doing this stuff with hardware and then going up to the cloud and that's why they have better results but um, it's something y'all can play with uh, some of the people out there had asked for it 
and it's not perfect uh, it's going to be in github so knock yourself out if you see some uh, better ideas uh, i guess you do ask for a pull request and uh, we kind of update the code and get to do some cooler stuff anyway this is uh, uh 12 uh, 23 uh 2017 i told people that uh some people that died uh, update this for their you know Christmas present you know the people that believe in that kind of stuff and that's about it have fun